Show. Yeah. Oh, we have a special guest for you. Yes, okay. we do. So let's get into this. It's official. Stranger Things season four is now the most watched English series in the history of Netflix. Not surprised because no. it is really good. In less than a month, viewers have streamed more than, check this out, 781 million hours of the show. Part of the show takes place at a prison camp, no spoilers though, in Russia. And if you've watched it, you may have spotted a familiar face as one of the prison guards. Take a look. <laughs> I gotta hand it to you, commies. You're committed. Well, we don't want to show you anything else just in case of spoilers yeah. because this show is incredible. But that Russian guard is played by a Minnesota actor. Give it up for Sasha Andreev. So excited you're here. I am, I am obsessed with this season. Okay, first off, we'll get into this. How did you get this? I mean, this these had to be all very coveted roles. Oh, absolutely. I actually didn't know what I was auditioning for specifically. Oh. Um, mm. I uh, I was on, this is during pandemic 2020. You can't really go anywhere. So sure. my partner and I decided to camp off the grid in a van in the middle of Utah. <laughs> uh, of course. And, and we're like on the campgrounds of Zion National Park. And I get an email from my agent here in town saying, there is an audition for Stranger Things. Please record these scenes in Russian and in English. And I'm originally from Russia, okay. so I speak Russian. I didn't learn it just for the part. Uh, and I'm like, well, what am I gonna do it? I literally don't even have a bathroom or electricity. <laughs> so uh, we literally ran to the nearby town and I found the closest hotel and I went begging the person at the front desk to let me use any space I can so I can record this. And she was like, come back in two hours, I'll let you in. Oh, wow. So basically with my phone and a little tiny tripod selfie stick that I brought to take pictures camping and hiking, <laughs> yeah. um, I recorded all of these scenes and then using one bar of service, <laughs> uploaded them. It took about like <laughs> two hours no or something. Stress. You know, if it's meant to be, it's meant to I be. I know. And then I didn't hear anything. And then four months later, I just got an email saying, send in a selfie of yourself. They want to see what you look like. And I was like, oh, Okay, and then a week later, they're like, you're booked. And I didn't know what I was gonna do until I arrived on set. Can I you ask just... how many selfies you took? Well, you're not allowed to take selfies. So I kind of snapped a few, but literally as I was taking a picture of myself after I got beat up, as you saw, sure. a woman walked by and said like, delete those immediately. Oh, um, oh okay. Um, so, and then they said, it's okay, just don't post them. Sure. So it's clearly there's a lot of secrecy involved with filming a show of this magnitude because I believe season three came out in 2019. So there's yeah. been a lot of waiting. There was some postponement this. because yes. of pandemic. So what what type of secrecy was just involved in this process? Well, the script doesn't have the title of the show. And when every actor who gets their scenes, they only get their scenes and everything else is blacked out. Wow. So you have no wow. idea what's happening other than sort of the general context of what's happening. Have you ever been part of something like that? Never. And I was on set with the Duffer brothers themselves. They are the ones who directed so cool. uh, my episodes. And um, I basically was able to ask just to get a sense of what's happening. But um, otherwise, you just sort of wing it and hope for the best. <laughs> Clearly it's worked out. Yes. So <laughs> we, we're not going to do spoilers. We've already talked about this, but you didn't know what was happening and you haven't finished the dump of the first episode. I yet, haven't. So, so this is an <laughs> so epic season. you still don't season. know what happens. I know that at the time of filming, it was the most expensive television show ever made. It wow. surpassed WandaVision, which had held the record yeah. before. Wow. Um, so I've seen episode one of season four, but because uh, theater is back and I'm also a stage performer. Mm -hmm. I've just been so busy working on that lately that <laughs> I'm making it through little by little. So I, no spoilers, cause I don't know. Right, exactly. <laughs> what were you, this is an exciting thing for you professionally, probably personally to be involved in one of the biggest television shows that's ever been out there. When were you officially allowed to tell people, oh, by the way, I'm gonna be in the new season of Stranger Things? Well, here's the thing. I think no matter how big of a small part you are in a show, you never know what's gonna end up on the cutting room floor. Yeah. So I decided to just keep it hush-hush until it came out. And then I figured, I'll fast forward, see if I'm in, and then I can kind of announce it. So I told a few of my close friends, but I didn't want to brag about something that may not even exist in the end. Sure. 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then, so we see you, just so we know to watch for you, episode seven. Episode seven, and then July and, 1st is okay. when the final two episodes of the season come out. So after you saw my butt kicked, uh, <laughs> uh, I, I should be making uh, an injured appearance. Okay. okay. Oh. I'll be watching for it. Yeah. I, I'm waiting on pins and needles because we watched the first two episodes and then uh, buzz through them like that. Like, you once must you have a lot of time on your hands. <laughs> a little, no, this is some late night viewing. There some late go. night yeah, viewing. Yeah, when you should be sleeping, but instead yes. you can't stop watching. So what was it like on the set of the show? Because there's so many stars that just kind of came out of this over the last, how many, how, when did it start? 2015? I think 16? Yeah, I think but, it started. But this is a show that's grown into something that's huge. What was it just like on the set? What was kind of like the vibe of it? Well, it's huge. So basically it's these giant sound stages that have these sets that are fully built, floor, ceiling, walls. So when you step in, you are in there. You're in that house. If anyone's watched it, there's mm -hmm. this sort of house that's one of the center set pieces. When you're in the Russian prison, you are in that prison. You look up and you see cobwebs and distressing. Wow. Wow. and bullet holes, wow. all of it. Um, and I got to sort of sit on the side with all the chairs, with all the stars, all the adult stars of the show. Um, and then they keep all the extras, of which there are dozens in a different portion. Uh, but the amazing thing about it, it's such a big show, they're literally shooting two different things at the same time. And the Duffer Brothers have two giant setups where they have a set of screens for the scenes they're directing and another set of screens for the scenes they're observing that other people are shooting. I mean, I would have a hard time wow. I know you're a professional, and that's why you do what you do. But most of all, I can be like, what oh, is going on? So I tried actually to keep my excitement under wraps right? because I was trying to be professional. <laughs> and there's Winona Ryder, and there's David Harbour, and there's Brett Gelman. And I'm, and I'm just trying to be as cool as all of them. Because you were a fan of the show oh, before yeah. you got this part. I was. What's your you favorite thing about Stranger Things? Because I think everybody has it, whether it's the action, whether it's the storylines, the nostalgia. What's your favorite part about it? I think the nostalgia combined with that's a sci-fi horror elements that I just love and all the gruesome sort of monster makeup <laughs> and they do a lot of practical effects. Um, I, I'm just a huge fan of that. So since you're not that far along running up that hill, has that come on your playlist yet? <laughs> I think song? that was in right. the first it's, it's a popular song right now from the show. It is. I think episode one featured yeah, it. Yeah, she so, had it in her yeah. headphones at the yep. school. You're right. Yeah. I'm, gl I'm glad that she's having a resurgence. <laughs> <laughs> she, she is. Okay, well, as you mentioned, you do theater. I do. So we're going to talk about that. You're sticking around after the break. A new musical that you're part of here in the Twin Cities, a story that many of us know well. That's as right. Well. Yeah, and Stranger Things Season 4 is available to stream right now on Netflix. The final two episodes of the season will be available next Friday, July 1st. Stick around, much more coming back. You gotta take that day off. Huh? You gotta take that day off. I know. <laughs> I'm telling you, we watched the first two and we were. I love that you clap. I love to clap. I'm, I'm, I'm with. I'm a man of the people. I try to be. How about that? No, you gotta be. Yeah, you gotta be the audience. You gotta be here. We gotta do it all. Yeah. We're back with actor Sasha Andreev, and besides appearing in season four of the smash hit Stranger Things, he's also featured in the world premiere musical version of Twelve Angry Men. It is playing now at the Ritz Theater in Minneapolis. Okay, you've been a part of Theater Latte Da for a while now. That's this right. is a big one. What is the process like of actually getting a show like that to the stage? Because we see it on the stage and we're like, amazing, but there's so much work that goes into it. Years in the making. So 12 Angry Men has been known since the mid 50s. It started out as a television play, it became a stage play, then it became a movie, then it became another movie in 1997. But it's about 12 men who are in a room debating whether a young man uh, allegedly killed his father. Mm -hmm. And this is the very first time it's ever been adapted into a musical piece. I've been with the show for about four years when we first started workshopping it back in 2018. Wow. Uh, and the writers of the show have actually had it you know, on their docket for almost a decade. So we were meant to stage it in 2020, but a couple things happened in yeah. that year mm -hmm. where it kind of sure. delayed us. <laughs> we'll pause. So we've continued workshopping it, and it's this complex jazz musical that intertwines wow. the original text with bra a brand new jazz score and additional uh, text by David Simpatico and Michael Holland, uh, directed by Peter Rostein, who was the artistic director of La Tida. So we see so many musicals now. I mean, you look at Hamilton, they take history and make it a musical. Now this is a very well-known piece of history from film, as you mentioned, and also theater. Yeah. What's it like to kind of change things up a little bit and make something that people are very familiar with very new at the same time. It's a little bit terrifying, honestly, because we know that this is a familiar text that people have seen in some form. Some people are protective of it. A lot of people are very skeptical of whether we could even do it. Uh, but the writers have done such a great job of interweaving 
the tension of the text into tension of the music. Wow. So people who may not even necessarily be musical theater fans are gonna walk away really enjoying it because the songs sneak up on you. It, it's, it's just intertwined and it's sort of that pitter patter It's kind of natural. You feel like yeah. you're in a movie, honestly, because nice. the music sounds like a score from a 1958 film. And who do you play in the movie? So Talk I play juror number four. He's the one okay. with the glasses who's very fact-based, and the glasses become an important plot point, mm -hmm. who sort of is one of the final holdouts because he just believes the boy is guilty until he may or may not be proven otherwise. But it's, um, it's very exciting, and it, it's a n tight 90 minutes. So once you're on board, you're just <laughs> rolling right on. No through. intermission? No intermission. Oh, wow. It's very exciting, and you still have time for dinner afterwards. Kinda That's got to like be a that. challenge as an actor, though, to be able to kind of go, there's no breaks. We've got to go full through. Exactly. You can't go to the bathroom. You can't leave the <laughs> stage. You're sitting around a table that spins throughout the show. There's a lot of slow motion elements and suspended animation that then gets thrust into regular life. So you are just sort of in a very filmic experience because it happens in real time. Yeah, for um, sure. And it gets quite tense on stage. Now, you, you spoke about how this is something that a lot of people are protective over. Mm -hmm. The writer of the original? Or the That's writer, right. How is, somebody is uh, giving your stamp so, of approval and you're pumped about Reginald it. Rose is the okay. playwright who wrote the original teleplay as well. And his son, who's the owner of the estate now, came with his wife to see the show and they absolutely loved it. And we were just on wow. pins and needles yeah. waiting to hear what they would think because a lot of people say, well, why isn't it 12 angry jurors or 12 angry women? Mm -hmm. Well, there's something about the toxic masculinity that takes place when 12 guys are in a room and how free they're, allowed, they're able to discuss and debate. So that was very important to them. So they wanted it to be 12 men, but it's, raced w uh, it's uh, cast with a, a multiracial cast. We have six BIPOC people, whereas originally it was white people. Mm -hmm. And they're debating the fate of a, of a Latino boy. So, you know, how does that get impacted? So it's still a period piece. It has this 2022 lens on it, mm -hmm. plus mm -hmm. music. And we were nervous that maybe they would just go, mm, it doesn't work. But fortunately for them, Clearly it, it does. did. <laughs> Clearly it does. <laughs> Sasha, thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Thanks so much for having me. 12 Angry Men, a new musical presented by Theater Lati Dai, is playing now through July 17th at the Ritz Theater in Minneapolis. Head to latida.org for showtimes and tickets. And once again, the final two episodes of Stranger Things Season 4 hit Netflix on July 1st. Very Best good. of luck. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Appreciate it. That was fun. <laughs> I feel like we could talk for another hour. I know.